All right. So, um, I'm actually trying to load the stream up again here on my end, but uh, I do know, like, I believe AKC and e are going to pick the Quick Star for this track. Okay, there we go. And the Glarius picked uh, Fat Shark. So, right off the bat, you should be seeing everyone here making, like, uh, at least E-Dragon and AKC are making heavy use of this sideways sliding technique called Momentum Turbo Slide, or MTS for short. We can talk about this more later, but uh, basically they're using MTS and side attacks to straighten out the machine and, uh, and gain a bunch of speed. So we can explain the tricks again in more detail again, later again, but uh... So basically these machines are some of the most slippery ones in the game, uh, at least Quickstar is. It's not easy to keep that machine under control like this. Uh, Fat Shark isn't exactly slippery, but it's kind of like clunky to handle at first. So it's, it's one of those machines again that you really have to master well. Uh, you have to take a lot of time to master it if you want to get good at this game. Uh, if you're not familiar with GX in general, like, after the first lap, they were able to get boost power. Um, and that lets you use some of your machine's energy for a speed boost. And the only way to refill your machine's energy is to go into a pink refill strip. And the energy acts as your machine's shields as well as being a boost meter. So it's a really neat risk-reward mechanic. Especially if you're good enough to not hit the walls. Like, uh, you still have to really think about where you want to use your boost to get the most out of them. So for this track, everyone's using uh, Fat Shark because you're going to be hitting a ton of boost plates and Fat Shark has the best boost power in the game. And you can also notice here like just how much the boosts can really just stack up to let you gain ridiculous amounts of speed. It's it's not just like you hit one boost and you're at this fixed boost speed. It just keeps stacking and that's one of the things that makes this game so deep. That, like, there's pretty much in any given track there's no, no limit to like the max speed you can attain. There's always room for optimizations. And at the end of the track here you can see that at least uh, I can see Nagoria doing this huge jump. Which is pretty risky because you have to like turn at just the right time to stay on the track. It looks like everyone got through, so that's cool. Like the the jump really is pretty dangerous and like it, it gets a lot of people trying to learn this track for time attacks. So some of these levels I guess we're gonna be seeing different people using different ships. Is it just what you're comfortable with? Is there like an optimal racer that you wanna use? for each level, or is it just there's a couple that I can choose this one or that one and I'm going to get the same speeds for the most part? Um, well, the machines have different strengths and weaknesses for sure. Like, uh, as I said, Fat Shark has the best boost power in the game. Uh, let's see. So, AKC has picked Black Bull, and uh, E-Dragon has picked Quick Star. Both of these machines are really good at uh, this sideways sliding technique. Again, it's called MTS. Uh, Quick Star is actually the best one at MTS. That's the one the E-Dragon is using. But, uh... AKC is using Black Bull. That one has a bit more weight to it. Uh, actually, a lot more weight to it. Uh, even though its MTS isn't quite as good, um, it can maintain high speeds better due to its weight. Uh, and the Glaria is using Gallant Star G4. Uh, the one E Dragon is using as well, Quick Star, like, and Gallant Star. These are custom machines. Actually, you uh, you make them out of uh, three different custom parts that so you can mix and match arbitrarily. Um, so Gallant Star G4 is a really heavy machine, and it's more stiff on turning. So um, its its sliding capability isn't quite as good. But like just in in terms of uh, like maintaining its speed and just like going straight and boosting, it's better than these other two machines. So that's kind of like the gist of it. 
but all these machines here are going to use MTS heavily through this stage. So basically how it works, you also see they're turning their engine off uh, as they're doing this sideways sliding technique. Uh, so turning the engine off strategically... Okay, wow, well, they're really close together. This is pretty good. Um, turning the engine off strategically is called uh, MT or Momentum Turbo. So basically there's, uh, there's times when you get a really high speed and you want to maintain that speed. Uh, it turns out if you turn your engine off, like that basically means you release A. Uh, that lets you preserve higher speeds better for some reason. It's kind of like the, the game doesn't decelerate you as fast compared to if you're holding the A button. So that's a trick that's used for many, many techniques throughout the game. Uh, and the sideways sliding thing, uh, that's called Momentum Turbo Slide. So it's, it's like MT plus a slide, that's the name. Um, so basically what you have to do is uh, you have to break your grip, the grip of the machine, so that you can kind of like turn sideways and still kind of be going forward. Like the thing about breaking your grip is that your machine is no longer moving like in the direction that you're facing. So normally it's like a disorienting thing, but they abuse the grip mechanic kind of to go faster in this case. Like uh, the reason you go faster is that they are like being propelled forward as well as strafing. And that's uh, strafing is a movement which is like you go uh, perpendicular to the way that you're facing. So you can always do like strafing adjustments. Uh, in this case, you're abusing the fact that it goes perpendicular to the way you're facing to like kind of add up the component of uh, your forward movement as well as strafing and just combining those two makes you go really fast. So it's pretty complicated to like, like not just to explain but to execute as well. But uh, mm -hmm. of course, these guys have all mastered it. So actually, uh, I should mention that Maguaria here tends to prefer, uh, just out of preference, he uh, tends to use Gallant Star G4 over stuff like Quick Star. Um, that's it's, it's just kind of a thing that like uh, several players in the community have like preferences to use certain machines or not use certain machines. It's, it's just a thing that you see. Like there's there's not really official categories separating different machines, but um, it's it's just a personal preference for people. There's actually uh, also people who don't use side attacks at all. Um, that doesn't include any of the racers here, but that does uh, make a big difference for other tracks as well. All right, so, so the here track that they're on right now, what is what track are we on right now? Uh, right now we are on Aeropolis Multiplex. What's so this is a this is a fat shark level because um, there's a lot of boosts and there's also these jumps that a fat shark can get a lot of uh, speed on. So when they do uh, these jumps, you see that they they kind of like angle to the side a bit and then they do a bunch of side attacks. Uh, just so you know, side attacks are actually like. You know they're meant for attacking other machines on the track. You know, when they're actually other machines. But they're doing time trials, so that's not the case. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, it turns out that if you do a bunch of side attacks, then it, it often speeds you up. So that's something you'll be seeing a lot here. Um, except, actually, during the boost laps, they don't use side attack dives as much because the the dives just go fast enough on their own without side attacks uh, when you get to a certain speed and also depending on like the the how big the dive is like these are kind of like medium sized dives so they're not worth side attacking at a certain speed um so this so this course is basically just like you're able to chain your boosts and boost plates just all the way through, so it's a really fast, nice looking track. There's also some tricky turns that 
a fat shark has to make, like a chicane kind of, after a dive. And there's some obstacles, so it's just, it's it's a pretty nice track to learn for time attack. At the end, you also see like there's these uh, landmines. On the, well, basically, if you hit a landmine like right at the center, and you gain a lot of speed, so there's there's a lot of ways to optimize this track. So basically, if there's a, a track with a ton of boosts, they're going to be using Land Shark for a good chunk of those, and just because of that boost upgrade that he has. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, the thing about Fat Shark specifically is that his boost lasts longer than any of the other machines in the game. Mm -hmm. It also has like quite good acceleration, just in general, like pickup speed, pickup power. Um, in this case, let's see. There's still a lot of boost in this one. Uh, okay, this is Big Blue Drift Highway. So Fat Shark is not the optimal machine for this, but it's pretty much the one machine that can consistently get good times. Like, there's other machines that can MTS better, so they can get slightly better times, but Fat Shark is only like two or three seconds behind the world record here, and um, it it can just run the level consistently. But it seems like the curves have a good radius for Fat Shark. Something like that. So the boost management at the end of the lap is kind of tricky because uh, the dash plates will keep your speed up, but refilling your energy is pretty important as well to uh, maintain your speed throughout lap three. This race is pretty close. They're all not having too many hiccups. It looks like E Dragon slightly ahead of Nagleria and AKC is slightly behind Nagleria. So pretty close race. Is there are there going to be certain maps you, that we might see one of these runners kind of get a bigger lead, or is it going to be pretty close like this, probably for the whole run? Um. Well, actually, I should mention that. If any of these guys uh, fall off the track at any point, then they have to restart that track. It's not like Mario Kart where you get, you know, Lakitu fished out. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely going to be some tracks later on, or, or maybe even coming up relatively soon where uh, someone could fall and die. So that's, that's definitely going to be a factor, trust me. So some of these first levels that we're seeing are kind of like easier level. I mean, they look pretty incredible to me right now, but I'm assuming they're like easier in comparison to yeah. what we're going to be seeing. Yeah. Um, right now we're in the Sapphire Cup. Uh, let's see. Well, this track can actually be a bit dangerous, as you can see. Uh, there's this really big dive uh, where you want to use a bunch of... You want to go way off to the side and do a bunch of side attacks, dude. It looks like tons of speed. AKC had some trouble there and had oh. to restart. Yeah. Oh yeah. So As. that's what I'm talking about right there. You're gonna see some deaths probably, but um, yeah, AKC can definitely catch up because there's a lot more dangerous tracks later on. You know, like like technically for these races, you know, you probably want to like if you want to get consistent, you know, like race wins, you would probably just like play it safe and try and not die, but, you know, there's always a balance between uh, consistency and just, like, style points, so... Mm -hmm. Especially because these guys are used to doing individual track time attacks. Of course, they've, like, practiced enough to try not to die, like, repeatedly on one level, so... Sure. With maybe one exception. There's, like... Yeah, there's this... There's this track at the beginning of Diamond Cup. You might see what I mean, but yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> but there's there's definitely some tracks where you have to practice a lot to like to make it look good and not be dying repeatedly. So like this kind of run overall is very challenging, I would say. To get good at. Yeah, it's definitely like a different mindset to be when you're doing a normal time attack for these where you're just like continuously resetting over and over to get a faster time yeah, for definitely. just one track, whereas in this, it's, you're doing every single track, so you can't, you have to play it a little bit safer. It's a race for everything, so. Right. 
you know, it's it's always a thing where you have to decide like how many risks you want to take, and between like you know how safe you want to be, like how many, I guess like how many risky tricks you can get away with without dying too much. So there's there's always a tricky balance. So here in a green plant Mobius ring, uh, I at least saw E Dragon do this. Well, actually, first there's like these mines in a the tunnel. There's there's like three of them in a row, and they just they just make lap one more interesting because, like, besides that, lap one is pretty slowish. But once you get those mines, you can actually get to like three thousand kilometers an hour if you do it just right. So. Like basically this this level is like two ovals. It's actually like it's called a Mobius ring, so it's like you have an oval and then a twist and another oval kind of. Uh but the thing is that the track is uneven and there's some weird features on it, so it's actually not that easy to optimize. Uh the the refill strips for your energy are also like on this really awkward terrain. So you have to be careful in order to refill your energy. These guys are doing pretty well at it. Though. Also, when you do that MTS, like after the tunnel, uh, if you're not careful, like if you go off to one side too much, then you can just get flown off the track because of how uh, bumpy the road is there. So there's some hazards in this for sure. It looks like Nagoya pulled ahead of E-Dragon a little bit. Just barely. Mistake. Yeah, just barely. Oh, we got Port Town. What is the what is something we should be looking for in Port Town stage? Oh. Right, so Port Town, uh this this level is called Port Town Long Pipe. Uh so we have the first pipe level. Um so pipes are pretty tricky to navigate, especially when the pipe becomes narrow. Like basically compared to a flat track. You're always more prone to skidding out of control and hitting all the dash blades is pretty hard because you have to keep track of what side of the pipe you're on. You can mm -hmm. see Nagoria and E-Dragon going through all these dash plates right now. And then you have these uh, rotating fans to deal with. So the fan positions, uh, they're determined by you know, how, how much elapsed time you have in the race. Like they start moving at the beginning of the race basically. Uh, it's like unless you're super consistent or just really familiar with the cycles, you just generally have to react to where the fans are. Um, the the obstacles at the end actually do not move, but there's there's just a lot of obstacles and the terrain is kind of awkward, so mm -hmm. that can also be kind of tricky. Um, on the boost laps, you basically like you want to use your energy to chain the boost together and basically go fast in the places where you won't be punished for it. Like there's this uh, bumpy part after the three fans where if you try and go full tilt here, then you'll probably just, you know, you'll get tossed all over the place. So you don't want to use your all your boost uh, for that section. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, and after that bumpy section, there was like this really strange drop-off kind of corkscrew-like thing. And it just takes some tries to like even understand what is going on there. AKC just went through it. Um, you're definitely going to slow down a bit there no matter what, but there's like a trick to like, you know, maintain your speed there. You kind of mm -hmm. have to take a specific route. So there, there's a bit of all parts in this track. All right, so E Dragon, the lead's been kind of going back and forth between Nagleria and E Dragon. Yeah. Nagleria had it going into Port Town. E Dragon took it right back, but it's not a big lead. It's like maybe two seconds. So, and then mm -hmm. AKC had that fall a couple uh, levels back. So he's a little bit behind, but again, like you said, this is anybody's game right now. It's yeah. Very easy for someone to fall off at some point. Yeah, especially this upcoming track, actually. This is definitely the most dangerous track so far coming up. It's called Mute City Serial Gaps, and uh, it's also the bane for like beginners doing Grand Prix mode. Um, 
and just it's a very difficult track like basically there at the beginning there's this tunnel where there's a bunch of land mines and uh, like on the first lap I'm not sure if they're gonna go for this mine jump let's see okay they went for it yep and the gray is going for the big jump too okay <laughs> so yeah to say the least these strats aren't like awfully safe especially because like it when you hit a couple of mines like you're not really sure what speed you're going to end up at because like depending on exactly how you're centered on the mines your speed is going to vary mm -hmm. on the and, mine jump the, when you jump on mines it gives you a speed boost correct right yeah and again it varies like depending on exactly like what position you're hitting the mines at Okay. And then after that, you have this jump plate, which the the jump plates like how far they send, how basically how high they send you, also depends on your speed. So you have to control everything very well. So Nagaria got these big jumps on like all three laps. It looks like, and he's taking the lead again. So this is good stuff. So you can see AKC here. He's using a different machine actually. Oh, he actually had to restart on lap one there. Not a big boss though. But, um, so AKC is using Quick Star here, and basically Quick Star, uh, it doesn't get as much speed from jumps compared to Fat Shark. But um, so what it can do is it can take this pretty unique shortcut at the end of the track. So hopefully we're gonna see that. Okay, yeah, he just did it. So basically the thing about Quick Star is it can glide better than uh, Fat Shark because it's lighter, and it also has like pretty floaty strafe turns. Oh wow, what the... <laughs> okay, I guess AKC has to restart lap 2 there. But yeah, just coming out of the tunnel it's always hard to predict like what's gonna happen because the terrain is so awkward at times. So you can see Magoria and E Dragon. Um, still under not. Uh, so th this time you're on the outside of a pipe. So I guess we just call it a cylinder level. Um. So this isn't really like a a level that you can go full tilt all the way on. Uh, because there's there's just some uneven there's just some like awkward terrain in the cylinder. But basically, again, you want to like keep your boost for the part where you won't be punished for going super fast. And there's also uh, places where you can get something called a shift boost. So this is another fundamental technique that's like especially important. Emerald Cup onwards. This is the start of Emerald Cup, by the way. It should be getting a shift boost. Okay, yeah, Nagoria got a big shift boost off the, off the big north there. So basically, uh, what a shift boost is, um, if you go into the air and then land like a few frames later, then uh, you get a big speed boost, especially with heavy machines like Fat Shark. And it's it's not really clear why this happens. Like it's possibly some kind of bug in like the aerial mechanics or something. But again, like if you go into the air, land a few frames later, then you then you can get this big speed boost, and in this case they're doing it off like slopes, little slopes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Nagoria got that huge one again. And it's it's very tricky to control yourself on a cylinder at those kinds of speeds. There's another shift boost you can get right at the end, the last turn in the cylinder there. Like sometimes you could do an MTS, again that's like a sideways sliding thing. You can do an MTS into a shift boost. Kind of like the, um, I'm not sure, it's something like the kind of instability that exiting an MTS gives you makes it easier to get a shift boost in some places. So you see that sometimes. Nigleria kind of extending the lead there, he got a couple, he had a pretty nice stage there. About a two to three second lead extra here. So probably about five to six total. Oh wow, 
Wait, E Dragon. Okay, I was really confused because it looked like Nagleria finished that. Oh, looks like he lost some time on the menus because he was ahead of E Dragon at the end of that last stage, but E Dragon just started ahead of him. So, oh yeah, maybe he like accidentally selected retry or something. Yeah, that's that's the thing about uh, time attack. Uh, I guess like all tracks in time attack, like you know in time attacks we're so used to like retrying to get a better time that uh, in this case you want to take select course to go to the next one yeah you can you can you know navigate going ridiculous speeds but menus can be tricky sometimes <laughs> <laughs> yeah so here we have a green plant intersection so this is a, another level that features it. you're going inside of a pipe for a lot of it um, so normally this pipe has to be navigated like pretty slowly because there's a bunch of twists in it. But if we're lucky, we'll see some shift boosting like E Dragon is doing right now. Okay, yeah, that was excellent. He got five in a row, five out of five on that lap. So basically, like if you approach the slopes in the pipe in a certain way, then you can get a bunch of like really cool looking shift boosts through the pipe. It's just so good when you like take a part that's normally really slow and then you turn it into like the fastest part of the level. And the the last part isn't too bad either. Like like basically you have to do these really tiny quick turns. Oh I haven't explained quick turns yet, but it's basically like uh so Fat Shark's normal turning is like pretty slow. And if you wanna do like Kind of like if you want to turn on a dime, then you have to do a little trick. Like you basically press, uh, if you're doing a left turn, you want to press R, the sh R shoulder button for a brief moment, uh, to kind of like uh, loosen your grip a bit. And then you press uh, left and L. And then so what, basically what happens, instead of doing like a normal strafing turn, you do like this kind of slightly drifty turn which uh, lets you turn faster with pretty much most machines including fat shark so that that's it it takes some getting used to like pressing the opposite shoulder button before turning like pretty much all the time you want to do that with fat sharks so it's definitely something you need to master oh and also you see akc going through the level right now um, after all these dash plates, you have this really awkward turn at the end. It turns out the speed strat is to do it. A pretty dangerous MTS through that turn. Like These guys are pretty good at it, but uh, when I was playing, I, I always had trouble with it. It was always like a, a definitely a dangerous point for me. And even for like normal players, just because of how weird the turn is shaped, you just have to be careful there in general. So, Nagoya and E Dragon are on Casino Palace double branches now. So, here's another fat shark level because, as you can see, there's dash plates just all over the place. And the track is also kind of narrow, so you can't, so like, it, it would be hard to, like, spam MTS and side attacks everywhere. So, let's see. E Dragon's coming up on lap 2 here. I forgot if he does like shift boost off the edge here. Okay, he just goes for the dash place. Basically, like there's a part uh, where there's no railings uh, near the beginning of the track. Can okay, we see Naguario going through this right now? Okay, yeah, Naguario is going for shift boost off the edge. As I said in uh, Cylinder Knot, a shift boost is where you um. You go in the air for a split second, and then you uh, you land like a few frames later, and for some reason this gets you a speed boost. So whenever there's no railings, you can strafe off the track, and then strafe back on really quickly to get a shift boost. But of course, if you're off the track for too long, then you die. So this is one of these risk reward things, which you know there's a lot of them in F-Zero GX, but like shift boost pretty much epitomized the risk reward thing. So you're gonna see more shift boosts off the edge in other levels too, but 
This is pretty much the first one. Or yeah, Naguerio attempted like two or three in each lap and didn't die, so that's good. So we can see AKC coming up on this part here. I think Naguerio is the most cons like comfortable one with uh, edge shift boost on this track. Like it's again, it's really tricky because, like, especially like for that shark, like there's diff there's there's better machines for doing a uh, shift boost off the edge. Basically, what Fat Shark has to do, he has to strafe off and then kind of do a quick turn back on. So you just have to kind of like process all those movements in the span of a few frames. And if you mess up, then you have to start over. Considering that this is like not a short track, like I could see why not everyone goes for it. Alright, so E Dragon's got about a 14 second lead. Naglaria was about 16 seconds behind um, from the previous track, so he made up about two seconds of time here. So relatively still really close race. 14 seconds in a game like this is pretty incredible at this point. Both yeah, are playing well really. then. And we've got AKC a little bit about at least a minute, minute and ten seconds behind. Yeah, but we still got this track and we've got Diamond Cup. There's plenty of interesting spots left to play, so. So here we have a uh, Lightning Half Pipe. And uh, since basically you have a half pipe which doesn't have any railings, like pretty much all throughout. Um, although it's the half pipe shape makes it really awkward to shift boost off the edge, so pretty much no one goes for it in single segment. But it can be done. Um, so again, like the half pipe shape kind of makes makes it tricky to turn like in a smooth manner. Like if you turn at the wrong place or at the wrong angle, uh, then. Then you just kind of slide around. Oh, and actually, Nagoria had to restart the level. So yeah, this this one is kind of dangerous, especially when you're going for the various shift boosts like that you can get just on the slopes in this level. And also, like the there are some risky jumps. I think Nagoria is probably attempting more risky jumps than E Dragon is here, so that's one reason he might have died. I didn't see exactly how it happened, but. But you have to be careful on pretty much all the jumps here. Like basically there's just like these jumps that skip kind of awkward uh, turns in the track, so they, so they save like a couple of seconds each. Like you can see Naguaria, uh right now, he jumped over this chicane that normally you have to do like three really quick turns on, and there's like no way for Naguera, or there's no way for Fat Shark to um, to make those turns in a smooth manner. So you gotta jump over that chicken. Okay, well this jump right here that Naguario is going for, like... I would say that one is the most risky jump that you can do. But he seems to be doing fine in it so far, on this attempt, so we'll see. So AKC is starting this, this level right now, so he's catching up to Naguario. So, um, let's see, this part in the query is on right now. If you keep your speed up here, you can get a shift boost going into the jump over to Shiking. Like, there's, again, this uh, shift boost is just off the slopes, not off the edge of the half pipe. And right now, right now, the query is trying to slow down to actually get a shift boost off the slope at the beginning of the track. So that's another thing you can do in this stage. Like, there's a... Basically, that shift boost requires you to be going at a low speed. Um, you, it actually works out pretty well on lap one. Um, but basically, on the boost laps, you want to like not boost before that point if you want the shift boost. I actually saw E Dragon might have had his first uh, small death in, at the start of Big Blue Ordeal right here, but he's still ahead. So. So, Big Blue Ordeal. Hold on a sec.
Yeah, so this is a level where there's a lot of jumps and opportunities to do side attacks. Uh, basically, those are Gallant Star G4 specialties. So, uh, Gallant Star has the world record here, and uh, I, I believe everyone in this race is also going to use Gallant for this track. So at the beginning of the boost laps, you can use that ramp to cut the corner there. The building is solid, so you have to watch out for it. If you hit it, then you probably just drop into the water and die. So, and there's this huge dive here. Oh wow, he actually landed below there, which is I would not have thought that was a consistent strat. I don't think he usually goes for it either, but he did. Alright, so Neglarius, actually AKC is about to start a war deal as well. So it looks like the... There's a, it looks like the smaller gap is actually between Neglaria and AKC right now, because Neglaria died on uh, the second lap of half pipe, I think. Or later in lap one, something like that. Yeah, all racers have at least died one time, but for Ooh, e Dragon, he died actually. relatively early. Well, you dragon just died in Ordeal, so oh, yeah. he's like even with AKC now. This is happening just so quickly. It's, like, it's hard yeah. to keep track of. This game moves so fast. Yeah, just yeah, like that, so. E Dragon had like a minute lead on everybody, and because of two deaths on this stage, it's just anyone's game again. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, and and we're not done with it with the dangerous levels either, like definitely not. Diamond Cup is so dangerous, you're gonna see later. What's, so, the, yeah. what's the scary part of the stage? Why is it, why is E-Dragon having so many issues so far with the stage? What's like, the obstacle? Well, basically, again, there's a lot of like side attack dives in this stage and like to, to do them optimally, you just, you wanna like angle outward as far as possible and then do a uh, and just do a bunch of side attacks to gain a ton of speed. If you go too far out, then you're not able to recover back onto the track. So that's one thing that might be happening. And just in general, there's like a bunch of uneven spots in the road to throw you off. So, like, if you're playing it safe, this isn't like a particularly dangerous track, but especially with side attacks, it can get crazy. So I guess this is one case where it's like, it looks crazy to you, and it actually is crazy to do as well. <laughs> okay, so we have Neguaria as the first finisher of Ordeal. You saw that, you might have seen that he, like, he actually broke his machine down and crossed the finish line. So that's, that's something you can do, like, it's commonly called a suicide finish, or a, like a broken finish. Like, so basically after, after you lose all your energy, uh, and then hit the wall, then you break down and you lose control of your machine. Uh, but you still have a few seconds to cross the finish line, if you have enough momentum. And uh, it turns out that, like in many cases when you break down, you kind of like get this big speed boost, like off the rails or something. So it turns out to be a speed strat. And uh, naturally, you want to make sure you actually cross the finish line. So yeah, another interesting tech. Alright, so E-Dragon went from first to last in this race. Glary in the lead, AKC behind him by, it looks like, around 30 to 40 seconds. And then E-Dragon is trailing behind by about maybe another 10 behind AKC. So still, again, no, this is the, we're in the Diamond Cup right now, correct? Yeah. Okay. So... Okay, this is like the track, which is like, okay, so this track is pretty thin, there's no rails pretty much everywhere, and that means you can do shift boost pretty much everywhere off the edge, and you know, if you want to get any sort of style points, then you want to go for a few shift boosts at least. The other thing is that this level is pretty darn long, so... You have a lot of time to mess up a shift boost, basically. So Neglaria is 3 lap 1. 
Uh, but he's still got a couple of laps to go. Although, um, generally, okay, well, with the exception of Nagoria, generally you wanted to like just play it safe and boost throughout the boost laps because that, you know, it keeps your speed up pretty well. Although shift boosts still definitely help on the boost laps. You still want to do these uh, shift boosts at the bottom of the dive for sure. You can see Nagoya is going over 3k here. Basically when you chain a bunch of shift boosts together, it makes a much more dramatic effect compared to like if you just do them in isolation. So if you're going to do shift boosts anywhere, you want to like pick one like good consistent spot where you can do several in a row. So I think everyone here pretty much is going to go for the ones at the bottom of the dive. Uh, Nagori is attempting a few more and not doing too bad so far, so... I wonder if he knows he's in the lead. He doesn't necessarily have to do all those shift boosts. <laughs> and he finishes, nice. Yeah, there he goes. I believe 228 beats my PB on this track. Yeah, Nagoria is pretty good at edge shift boost. Possibly the best uh, one out of these three racers at shift boost off the edge. Like actually, these these three guys, I would say like you can you can point out different strengths and weaknesses between them as well because there's so many texts to learn in this game, and so just naturally some of them are going to be better at some texts than others. Yeah, you kind of have some freedom to like focus on what you want to focus on to get better at so that's that's pretty cool yeah definitely so AKC also had quite a solid uh, Trident 231 there and E-Dragon is gonna be at 230 so if I'm not mistaken no one died on Trident this is not a usual thing I'm pretty sure okay but we're not done with the shift boost yet as you can see with Nagoria here on lateral shift. Oh well, he got a nice MTS in this shift piece at the end of that left turn. So basically, like this one, it's not really that each shift piece is, uh, has a really tight window to do. But it's just that there's so many shift piece to do that uh, it can get out of control pretty fast. It looks like he's handling it pretty well so far, though. I believe E-Dragon also, is also pretty consistent in this one. Again, like, you always have a choice, you know? You want to go for the next shift boost, or do you want to play it safe and just make sure you finish? I feel like it's impossible to play it safe at all with this game, like, you're going so <laughs> fast. Like, how, what is, what is considered safe in this game? I don't even know, to be honest. But <laughs> these guys are handling it pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just watching this level here, it's just ridiculous. Oh yeah, so the thing, the thing about, oh, okay, AKC actually had to reset that Yeah, I was gonna say, one. AKC had to reset there. So E-Dragon takes second place again, the glare in the lead, and AKC in third here. Nagoria actually had a little menuing mistake again. Again, it's easy to select retry or something. Um, so let's see. So if you're if you're wondering exactly like what these shift boosts are, like you have like this uh, kind of part where the road ends, and then you have this track on the side. Uh, basically, you could just like strafe uh, as as soon as you get off the track in order to complete a shift boost. And so you can just keep doing that at every single corner. That's like the main feature of that level. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, shift boosts are pretty much named after that track called lateral shift. Like that's pretty much, uh, as far as I know, that's why it's called shift boost. And actually the staff ghost even, like there's a, uh, you know, ghost, there's time trial ghosts made by the developers. Even the staff ghost uses shift boost on that level. So it's an intended mechanic, pretty much. So Naguaria right now, and E-Dragon, 
they're on the far field undulation. Here's another level where you can get a lot of shift boosts. Not quite as many, but um, you can get sorry, you can get shift boosts off the edge of off the edge of the parts with no rails, especially on the top of the bumps. Like basically, the thing is when you when you do a shift boost off the top of a bump, um, you have a bit more leeway than usual because like basically you start the shift boost at a higher spot and you're trying to come back onto the track at a lower spot so you know um you have some leeway to fall down a little bit uh, before you actually recover so uh, that makes the shift boost easier compared to a flat track so that's the reason behind that oh you dragon has to restart undulation so he's almost even with AKC. Okay, Nagleria didn't have the cleanest undulation here. It's pretty chaotic with the jumps Ooh. as well. You dragon had to restart again. Oh. Second reset on this stage. So AKC hops into second place. Yeah, so um the real crazy thing about this level I would say is that the jump plates. You basically, you want to take these jump plates because they skip uh, this part of a track which has a bunch of little bumps and like basically there's no way to go fast on these bumps. Like especially on the boost laps, you want to go over it because like you're just wasting your boost going slow basically when you're on those little bumps. So um, you want to try and take the jump plates if you can do it consistently. Um, the thing about it is that after each jump plate, there's a ton of like metal bars in the air, and they are perfectly solid. You can hit them, and so you have to take the jump, you know, at just the right speed, kind of, so that you avoid all the bars. Like you can hit them and still survive, but it's kind of taking a chance there. So as you can see, AKC went over like four bars and then like went just under another one. Overall, this is a pretty chaotic track. Mm -hmm. So Nagaria here is on a uh, dragon slope. So this, this is a pretty nice track to learn for time attacks. Oh, E-Dragon died like near the end there. So E-Dragon was in the lead for a while, but now he's uh, a couple laps behind others. I guess a full track now, actually. Yeah, it's pretty heartbreaking to see a runner die on like the last lap. It's This is a brutal game. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, There's still possibly some spots you can catch up. In fact, Nagoya had to restart early in Dragon Slope here. Mm -hmm. But I would say the most dangerous tracks are probably over right now. It's still hard to say, but like for the most part, Undulation is the, the last like really dangerous track, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But we we'll see. So, uh, Europolis Dragon Slope. It's a very nice high-speed track in general, especially with Gallant Star being so good at these side attack dives. You're gonna be landing at like, you know, 2400 kilometers an hour regularly, something like that. 2600. And then at the bottom you can get. Ooh. Okay, Nagoria died again in this, so. So AKC is now chance. in the lead. Yeah. This has been jumping back and forth. Like, everybody's had the lead at some point by a decent margin. Yeah, Diamond Cup will do that in general. I guess on second thought, this track isn't so safe after all. <laughs> yeah. Like, the thing... Okay, with these side attack dives, if you go off to the side too much at any point, then the game will consider you out of bounds and then just instantly say you're dead. So you want to be careful of that, obviously. And at the bottom, so what Nagueria was going for uh, was these shift boosts on the edge to get even more speed. Um, again, Nagueria seems to like, go for more edge shift boosts than the others. 
Um, and then after that, you have these like turns on the ice when you're going at like, you know, 2500, so you gotta be careful. Mm -hmm. Obviously the ice uh, messes with your traction, so you can lose control a bit more easily there. So yeah, it looks like AKC isn't going for the edge shift boost. Play it a little um, bit safer. Yeah, it's always a wise thing to do when you're in the lead. Yeah, just overall, this is a really nice high-speed track. It's it's a definitely a good one to learn for time attacks. If nothing else, like if you ever wanted to beat a staff boost by over 20 seconds, this is the course to do it. Like, actually, the world record beats the staff boost by like one minute, 10 seconds for the record. Like the thing is, it's not just about the side attacks, but even if you don't do side attacks. You can just do the dives a lot faster if you know uh, Momentum Turbo. Again, that's just the thing where you let go of the accelerator to maintain higher speeds. I can talk a bit more about that actually. Like, So at any point the game is trying to... Uh, if you're holding A, the game is trying to slow you down to like your normal max speed, which is like 1100. And uh, if you let go of A, then basically the... Well, actually first, if you're holding A, if you're close to 1100, you only slow down like very slowly. If you are much higher than 1100, like say 1800, if you're holding A, then you drop down really fast. So it, it kind of like your speed loss is like exponential with how, how fast you're going, something like that. But if... If you're not holding the accelerator, then your speed goes down like more linearly compared to your speed. I mean like it it just goes down linearly no matter what your speed is, more or less. So even if you're going like 2000, if you, as long as you let go of the XL, then you're going to be keeping your speed really well. So it's definitely a very important technique to know, and it's pretty easy to like basically do. But Knowing exactly when to do end TP, like it, it's just something you have to practice. Okay, so we have Phantom Bro here, and we have a machine we haven't seen before. It's called Sonic Phantom, and um, so this this machine it it's pretty fast. It's not like super good at the advanced techs. It can sort of do MTS, but it's not nearly as powerful as the other machines we've seen so far. But the thing about this track, it's super narrow and it's always like kind of bumpy, so it's one of the hardest tracks to do advanced techs in. So as far as consistency, uh, these guys have chosen to like just pick a more stable machine, kind of. Like, just easier to handle. So this is pretty much the only track where you want to take that into account, like actual stability. Mm -hmm. No Except e Dragon here, which uh, he's going for Black Bull and he's going for, you know, the advanced text. So he, I believe he's pretty much the best uh, out of these three, uh, just this track in general, so that's why he's going for it. He also has to figure he's probably behind some as well because of the mistakes yeah. that he made. So just a quick summary, we've got AKC in the lead, and Galeria's not too far behind, and then E-Dragon a little bit behind Galeria, but he's been making up some time here. And this lead has been, been going back and forth throughout the whole race, so it's still anybody's game at this point. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Yeah, so as, as you can see with E-Dragon, like, if you're trying to do these MTSs through the curves, like, it's... It's just like every MTS he does, you're, you're wondering if he's going to just smack into the wall really hard because it's so it's so narrow and it kind of looks bumpy all over the place. And that's what it is. So it's not an easy track to learn like this. So just the fact that he's got it consistent enough to demonstrate in the race is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Alright, so AKC and uh, Maguire here. 
we've got an Aeropolis screw drive. Um, so, so basically the AX cup. Uh, that's what they're starting right now. It's a or, like for now we we're seeing like a decrease in difficulty unless you do finish just like what AKC just did. He just got a really big suicide finish. But um, basically like this AX cup is a decrease in difficulty because it's kind of a bonus cup. Mm -hmm. um, it's the tracks from F-Zero AX, which is the arcade counterpart to F-Zero GX. So th this cup just like entire entirely consists of the AX tracks. So like to begin with, you have a track with not too many features. It's pretty wide. Um, because it doesn't have a lot of features, uh, people just like, you know, MTS and side attack all over the place throughout the track to get the best time. You're gonna see e can do that as well. So AKC in the lead here, he's starting uh, Outer Space. And this is an interesting track because you have this tunnel that kind of like mostly goes straight, but it has these waves all over the place. So there's a lot of spots actually where you can get shift boosts and sometimes you can get really big ones. So this this track is just full of unpredictable shift boosts. It's also tricky to line yourself up for these dash plates because the track is waving all over the place. If you do it right, this is a really nice looking high speed level. So you see Nagoria using Fat Shark here, which is pretty interesting to me because he, I'm pretty sure his PB is with Gallant on this one. Maybe he's just like representing different machines at this point. As I said, it's just kind of a thing that we do, like, you know, even if it's not the optimal machine, like, just depending on our preference, we might prefer one machine over another on a certain track. Mm -hmm. It's just a comfort level for different racers and whatnot. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it looks like E-Dragon is going with Fat Shark as well. Like, actually, uh, Gallant Star and Fat Shark are not that different time-wise on this level. Like, maybe a couple of seconds, considering what the best times with Gallant and Fat Shark are. Mm -hmm. So it's really not that much of a difference. As you can see, there's a lot of boost plates which is Fat Shark's specialty. Um, the parts that Gallant probably gains on are uh, the ability to get shift boost. For some reason, it seems like Gallant Star is a little bit better at like, getting shift boost. It might depend on the track, but it seems like it's a little bit more consistent at Fat Shark at getting some of these uh, shift boosts off the slopes of the level. And also, uh, Gallant Star is better at the side attack dive which they do out of the tunnel. So AKC is doing a Port Town Cylinder Wave right now. So um, this one is a bit different from Firefield Cylinder Knot because a lot of the parts of the cylinder, it's kind of like a flattened cylinder. So um, like basically if you try and go on from one side of the cylinder to the other, like AKC is doing right there, um, you have to like approach it very carefully in order to not get tossed around. And just overall, this track keeps twisting in kind of a weird way, so it takes some getting used to for sure. But you can pretty much boost like crazy throughout most of the track, as far as you can, as long as you can like control your machining under those conditions. But it's not easy. It's a nice looking track, like when you when you have someone like AKC doing it. Like I think he's he has one of the best times in the world in this stage. Kind of just so extending right now, in his lead right now. Yeah. Okay, I think he got like one forty three. That's really solid for this stage. Oh wow. Okay. You see Naguario there, like. The end of the track, the cylinder gets super thin, so it's easy to get tossed around, like, 
like crazy there. So fortunately he didn't like die or anything, but you know, you can lose a lot of time there. Like generally with cylinders you stick to the track pretty well. It's kinda hard to like intentionally die, but you know, things can happen unintentionally. They it just happens. It's hard to say why, but you know, you just you just hit a slope the wrong way and and it can happen like that. So AKC is on the uh, Lightning Thunder Road right now. So this is so incidentally, this this track has actually seen a lot of activity lately. Like there's been like I think CGN said there's like 13 people who have updated their times in this track recently. It's a popular track for time attacks. Um, it's it's a pretty long track, but it has a lot of variety to it. I guess it just flows really well, so... Like, especially on the boost laps, it's just a treat to watch. Okay, so AKC, like, after that dive, he just got this MTS into shift boost. It's kind of like a, sort of a recent strategy actually made by CGN. Um, in fact, you can not only get that shift boost, but you can get... You can kind of like chain it into more shift boosts. Like after the tunnel, and that's uh, that's why the world record in the state has been updated by like five seconds recently. So there's still new strats going on, that's for sure. Despite this game being released in 2003. Yeah, so um, so this level, like the boost laps, they actually look like pretty conventional compared to some levels, like. For a lot of it, you're driving straight and just like timing your boost well. There's a thing about that though. Um, so between boosts, there's actually like a, a short period, like up to 10 frames, uh, in which your boost effect has run out, but you can't boost again yet. You have to wait until like those up to 10 frames are over before you can boost again. So in this short interval, um, there's nothing you can do to keep your speed up besides just let go of the accelerator, which again is called MT. So uh, that's why you see them turning off the accelerator after each boost. It's called MT boosting. And it's, it's just a fundamental thing to keep your speed up on boost laps. You know, and it's, it, it was actually a pretty recent discovery that like there was really this this window in which you're not boosting and you can't boost again yet like I guess I guess we were never really sure like why empty boosting worked but it's it's just something we found that was faster in general so that was kind of a recent research discovery So AKC is moving on to the second to last level here. So we're almost done with the race. Um, so this next level AKC is doing is the longest level in the game. Oh, I think Nagoya got like 240 on that stage, which is really close to his PV. So he's definitely doing what he can to catch up here. So the one AKC is on right now. Um, it's gonna last like three minutes, I think, for for him. So at the beginning, there's this shortcut you can do. It skips a couple of turns, and um, the shortcut is a bit harder than it looks because, like, if you landed the wrong spot, pretty much, then the game's checkpoint system says that like you've skipped too much of the track without landing, and then so it instantly kills you. So that's definitely something to watch out for. Like it's basically the the game's like anti shortcut system, or something like that. That you have to cross certain invisible checkpoints as you go along. Otherwise, uh, it doesn't count as you having landed. So Nagoya managed to make it with a heavier machine as well. 
It's generally easier with wiser machines. But it looks like he's just got the hang of it. So, again, with the different machine choices, we have uh, AKC using Quick Star and Maguire using uh, Gallant Star. So, it, it just seems to be Maguire's like, preference usually to not use Quick Star. So, that's, that's probably something you saw on earlier tracks as well. And AKC happens to be really proficient with Quick Star on this track. So, you'll probably see him extending his lead a bit more here. On the other hand, just the other day, E-Dragon got a time with Quick Star here that was like, you know, just a few seconds off what anyone can do here, and he did it in a race, so... I would say overall, like right now, it just comes down to like, can they land the shortcuts that they want to do? Because uh, this is the second to last track, there's not too much time to uh, catch up here, I would say. But they can still show off a bit. So right now we have, let's see, AKC in first, Nagoria in second, and E-Dragon in third. So that's probably what it's going to be as long as they don't die. In fact... AKC just died. So AKC is third. Aguaria is first. What and a race. Dragon is third. <laughs> yeah. What a race. I wouldn't have expected AKC to die like that, too. He wasn't on one of the shortcuts. It was just like. Well, in fact, these guys are human and these machines are hard to control after all. Mm -hmm. I guess it happens late in races sometimes. This game is pretty hard to keep playing like that for, like, over an hour. So... Yeah, it looks like, uh, Nagorio's well on his way here, as long as he doesn't have anything unfortunate at the end. But yeah, it looks like he's playing it safe by not boosting before this ice turn. On that ice turn, if you boost before it in an MTS, you can go really fast. Like the thing with the ice, it enhances your MTS. Because like, uh, MTS is all about like keeping your grip broken. That's why you have these really slippery machines. Uh, because they can do MTS really well. And so, uh, if you do, if you do that along with like doing an MTS on the ice, that's just like you can maintain your MTS speed super well, even if the turn lasts like three seconds. All right, so Nagoria's on the last track here. But there's actually a few machines that are really good for this track. But he's picking a fat shark, possibly for consistency, possibly for like a kind of a uh, spiritual mirror match with the Staff Ghost. This is actually one of the best Staff Ghosts in the game. Like, it's only... Nagoria's probably only gonna beat it by like... 3 seconds at most. So, this is like the level where the, the game basically encourages you to learn Fat Shark. And optimize it. But the, the Staff Ghost doesn't know MTS, so Nagoria's definitely got an edge here. It's not like they're actually racing the Staff Ghost right now, just why I said like a spiritual race, but... It's good to know this the Staff Ghost is actually pretty good here. So Nagoria is done. And E-Dragon is on his way. It looks like Nagoria should have gotten a time of like 109 something. So Nagoria takes first. Looks like AKC taking second. 
especially E Dragon, because oh, oh, because of the fall there, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, AKC is on his way through the last track. So this is pretty close overall. Like, you know, considering all that can happen, as you saw, like they finished, you know, just within a minute or two of each other. So E Dragon is done. Oh, Nagori is showing awesome chapter two there. This game does have a story mode, by the way. That, that's what was demonstrated at AGDQ a couple of years. This is the level where you can shift boost all over the place. KC to show. Hold on one second. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. AKC was going big right at the end there. He just fell out. So yeah, at the end of this track, you can do this like big MTS into a rail slide. Actually, I haven't even explained rail slides yet. Didn't get the chance to, but um, if you do an MTS along a rail, for some reason it speeds you up a lot more than normal. It's something strange with the collision in this game. And uh, like just for some reason, it gets you a much bigger boost than a normal MTS. It's only done at the end of a level because it's really hard to like exit a rail slide with good speed. So you just do it at the end where you don't have to worry about uh, exiting it. Okay, so AKC is done. All right. All right, let me have the runners join the call real quick, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the race, and we'll also talk about more of the community. Give us a few moments here, guys. We're gonna run a couple ads as we get this interview section set up, um, and then again, we'll have an interview with both Nagleria, AKC, and I believe E-Dragon's mic has been having issues, so it might be just those two, but just give us a few moments here as we get this set up.